How's it going everyone, Vertic Designs here and for this Photoshop tutorial I'm going to show you how to remove complex and difficult backgrounds in Photoshop. So with that being said, let's jump straight in. Once you're in Photoshop, you want to go up to image right at the top and then go down to calculations near the bottom. And what this will do is it will bring up this window and it will make everything look like it's in black and white. Now to simplify this, you have yourself source one. In here, you want to tell Photoshop what your image is called and what you want to work on. You also want to tell Photoshop which specific layer that you want to work with. And mine is called background. So you want to select that specific layer. And now we get to the most important setting, which is of course the channel. Now, if you left click in here, you will have the traditional red, green, and blue. The main goal here is to separate the background from the image as much as possible. So what I mean by this is you want to make the background extremely bright and then the image that you want to keep extremely dark. And what your goal here is to have a look through each and every channel and see which one does the best job at doing that. So for example, you can see that the gray one doesn't really look that great. The red one is even worse because the sky just blends in with the image. But once you start to go to the green channel, you can see there is a big difference. This one looks a lot better. But if you also go down to the blue channel, you can see that this one is the best. It creates a big contrast between the background and the image. You also want to do the same for source two. You want to go down to the channel and set it to a blue channel. And once again, you can see a big difference. The sky is well lit up compared to the image. Now we also have the blending at the bottom. And if you left click in here, this will bring you all of the layer effects. And once again, your goal here is to have a look, see which one looks really good for your image. Now the one that works best is definitely the one near the bottom called add. If you left click in here, this will give you the option for the opacity, offset and scale. Now we're not going to focus on opacity or scale, but we will focus on the offset. So if you go to the slider and then you move this over to the right side, you can see that this will make things brighter. But the main goal that we have is to go into the opposite direction and you want to go to something like negative 255 to get yourself this contrast right here. Once you've done that, you then want to go ahead and go all the way down to the bottom and set this one to a new channel. You then want to go ahead and press OK. And straight away, you're not going to see much of a difference. Your layer will become red. And if you go over to the channels, you will notice there is a new alpha one channel at the bottom. So from here, what you want to do is you want to have a look at the image and see which areas you definitely want to keep and you don't want it removed. And what we're going to do is we're going to get ourselves the polygonal lasso tool. If you right click in here and get yourself the middle one. You then want to left click, get yourself a quick selection near the edge of the mountains. It doesn't have to be perfect as long as you select a lot of your image or majority of it, and then go all the way around back to the very first one, left click to connect it all up. Once you've got yourself a selection, you want to make sure that you've got yourself a black color selected because from here, what we can do is we can press alt or option key and backspace. And this will just fill in that area. And no matter what is inside of here, it won't get removed. I'll go ahead and press control and D to deselect it. Now, once again, you want to have a look at your image and see any areas that you want to definitely keep. So for example, you can see these areas, we definitely want to keep these ones in. Once again, you just want to left click, get yourself a selection, making sure that you include these, go back to the very first one, left click to connect it all up, press Alt or Option key and backspace. Once you've done that, you want to press Control and D to deselect it, and you want to press Control or Command and zero. And this will just fit it back to screen. The next thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and press Control or Command and M. And what this will do is it will bring us the curves. And if we move this over to the right side, we want to once again, enhance the background from the image and really make it contrast. 
So to do this, we're going to go ahead and get ourselves a curve right at the top. And you want to lift this one to something like 200 for the output and then 172 for the input. You then want to drag the bottom one down as well. And this one, you want to drag it down to 42 for the output and then 82 for the input. And it should look something like this, where it's got a nice curve to it. And you can see the before and after, it just brightens up the sky and really separates it from the image. You then want to go ahead and press OK. And there we go. As you can see, we have now separated it once again. Now we're not done just yet because we also have certain areas. For example, if you zoom in to the bottom area of the bridge, you can see that we still have a lot of the background, which is still quite dark. So to fix this, all you have to do is press B to get yourself the brush tool. And once you've got yourself the brush tool, we're going to go into the settings and we're going to change the size to, let's say, 200 pixels just to make life so much easier. And we're going to set the hardness to 100%. A really cool trick for this is if you go to the mode and if you set this one to a overlay, you can get yourself a white color at the bottom, make sure you're selecting it. And then you could just simply left click and fill in the sky. And as you can see, this is making it a lot brighter. Now, the really cool thing about this is that you can now go inside of the bridge and it won't affect the bridge since we are selecting the overlay for the mode. And this will save you a lot of time from having to manually do this yourself. You can also go down to the ground and as you can see, it won't affect the ground as much. And then just continue on filling this in, making the sky as bright as possible. Now you probably noticed that I didn't go inside of this area right here. And the reason for this is because if you have any areas with little details or fainted or very faded areas, if you go into this area, it will start to remove those details. So what you want to do is you want to press Ctrl and Z to undo, and we're going to lower the opacity to 50%. And if we zoom in now and have a look, you can see that this will remove the background or make it brighter, but will also maintain the details. But then once you've done that, you also want to go back to the opacity, set it back to 100%, go back into the settings and set it to 0% for the hardness. You then want to make the brush size a little bit smaller and then just nicely blend this in so it's not as visible. And there we go. You can see that looks a lot better. So from here, once again, set your brush to something larger, set it to 100% and then just continue on removing and making the background as bright as possible. And what we're going to do now is we're going to press X to swap on over to a black color. And we're going to do the opposite effect this time. And we are going to fill in the ground. And as you can see, once again, it's not going to affect the sky and we'll only focus on the ground. You can also go over it again and that will make them even darker. So sometimes you'll have certain areas which you'll need to make them darker. And we're going to focus on the sky as well. So once again, swap on over to a white color, go into the brush settings and set it to something like, let's say 600 pixels, just to make life so much easier. And then you just want to left click, fill this in. And like I said before, you don't have to worry about going into the bridge because we have set it to overlay. So it's only going to affect the background. And just fill this in. Get yourself all of the sky nicely lit up. And there we go. Now, the only downside to this is that sometimes when you do apply this, you'll notice that some areas will become slightly more faded. And as you can see right here, some of these lines have now become more faded. So to fix this, we're going to get ourselves the polygonal lasso tool once again. And then you just want to left click and get yourself a selection only selecting the upper half of the bridge. Go back to the very first one and then connect it all up. From here, you want to press Control or Command and L, and this will bring you the levels. With the levels, what we can do is if we move the middle slider, 
over to the right side, you can see that the lines will become a lot more visible and a lot more bold. For me, 0.07 works really well, but you just want to experiment and see what works best for you. But you can see the before and after there is a big difference and that is exactly what we want. Once you're happy with your results, go ahead and press OK and you want to press Ctrl and D to deselect this. And there we go. We have now really created this mask which will separate the image from the background. Now, the only downside to this is that sometimes you will always have certain areas, for example, this one down here, where the lines become faded or completely gone. But unfortunately, for this area, we're going to have to recreate it ourselves. So one way to fix this is to go ahead and re-enable the RGB and you want to hide the alpha channel. Once you've done that, we're going to go to the layers and in the layers, you want to get yourself a new layer above this one. What we're going to do is we're going to zoom into this area and you want to go down to the shape tool right at the bottom, right click in here and get yourself a rectangle tool. From here, all you have to do is left click on the line and then make sure that your shape fits the same width as the actual line itself. But we also want to get rid of the stroke and we want to fill this in with any color that you want. It doesn't have to be a specific color, but you just want to fill this in and then you can minimize this. You can then go to the first tool and from here you can press the number two key on your keyboard to lower the opacity and you can have a look, see if this fills in that line. And as you can see for us, we just need to make it a little bit more thinner. And to do this, we're going to press Control and T. You want to hold Shift and just make sure that this is on the actual line itself. You can then go to the first tool, apply the changes, and we're going to press zero to set it back to 100%. From here, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and you want to hold Alt or Option key and then left click onto here. And this will duplicate the shape. And it's a really cool shortcut. You want to, once again, just hold Alt or Option key, left click, and there we go. It will even remember the gap that you created so it will be perfectly even. And you just want to do this for the rest of them as well. Continue on, filling these in, making sure you are on top of them exactly we can zoom back out and have a look, see if it all matches. And if it does, then that's great. You can go back to the very first one that you created, left click on this one, go all the way to the top, and then hold shift, click on the top one, right click on here, and convert this into a smart object. From here, what we need to do is we need to get rid of the extra excess on top of this image. So we're going to, once again, get ourselves the polygonal lasso tool and you just want to left click and get yourself a selection, making sure you get rid of the areas outside of the bridge. You want to go all the way back to the very first one that you created and then left click to connect it up. From here, you want to press Control or Command and J and get yourself a copy of it. And you also want to hide the one underneath it. Hold Control or Command and left click on the thumbnail to copy the selection. You can then hide this one, go back into the channel and go down to Alpha 1. With this new selection, you want to make sure you're selecting a black color and once again, press Alt or Option key and Backspace. You can then press Control and D to deselect it. And as you can see, we have now filled this in. So from here, all we have to do is press Control or Command and zero. We're gonna fit this back on the screen and you want to once again, hold control, left click on the thumbnail for the alpha channel to copy the selection. Once you've got yourself the copied selection, you want to re-enable the RGB and you want to hide the alpha channel. You then want to go back to the layers, go all the way down to the background and you want to hold Alt or Option key and then left click on the mask button near the bottom. And there we go. As you can see, we have now removed the background. But the only thing is, you can see that the lines are still very blue. This is because of the old background. To remove the color cast from the bridge itself, we're going to hold Control 
left click on the mask to get ourselves a selection. You want to get yourself a new layer above this one. And you want to press B for the brush tool to get yourself the brush. From the brush, we're going to set the size to something like, let's say, 100. Set it to 0% for the hardness. And make sure you set it back to a normal mode. You then want to hold Alt and then left click on the part of the bridge to copy the color. And we're going to use this as the reference. Now that you've got yourself the color, you just simply want to left click and paint this onto the bridge, making sure that you fill in those lines so they're not looking so blue. Once you've filled in those areas, you also want to press Ctrl and D to deselect it and have a look if there's any areas that you don't need it to select. So for example, we have some extra areas and we're just going to get ourselves the eraser tool and just simply remove these areas since we don't need them to be included. So we're just gonna clean things up down here and also have a look around the other areas. Up on the bridge, down here, from here, all you have to do is set this layer to a color. And you want to set the color to something like 80% for the opacity. And there we go. You can see before and after, big difference. You will have noticed as well that this bridge down here is very blue as well. And since we created that layer above right here, we can just unhide this one again. We can double left click on here to get ourselves the blending options. Get yourself a color overlay, and you want to set it to something like 621212, or just any color that matches the bridge. You want to set it to a darker color, and go ahead and press OK. Now for this one, we're going to press 2 on our keyboard to set it down to 20%. And then finally, the very last thing that we want to do is we want to also get ourselves a mask on top of this one. And you want to get yourself the brush tool, set it to a black color and remove any extra areas. For example, you can see on the bridge, these areas right here. So you just want to make sure that you get rid of these. And that's pretty much it. As you can see, we have now removed the background. Everything looks great. But anyway, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think of this video. And as always, I will see you all in the next one. Bye.